Hello and welcome to the AT75 show. My name is Luke. Before we get into it, please like, share and subscribe. Click the notification bell so when you get a notification when I put a video up, I have 198 subs. Want two more to hit 200, please? And let's get into the video. And it's finished. Birmingham City 3, Bristol City nothing, zero, as B Birmingham dominated Bristol and St Andrews today. What a match. Really, the best performance I've seen Blues play this season. Three changes from the team that lost against Borough on Wednesday. Hall, Dean and Hannibal in with Deedee, Graham and Backer dropped to the bench. Blues were currently sat 19th in the league and Bristol 14th. Bristol have hit a bit of a rough patch. Three consecutive losses against Norwich, Burnley and QPR and a draw against Coventry. And we all know Blues lost their match against Borough. Two consecutive draws against Sheffield and Coventry and two wins at home against We've got two wins against West Ham, West Brom, sorry, and Preston. <clears throat> Kick off immediately, much better for Blues in the last game. We were quicker, weren't giving bright Bristol any uh, Bristol any space. With a couple of seconds, I think it was about two, three minutes in early corner. Chong hit it to the back post. Austin Trusty came out of absolutely nowhere, one 0 to Blues, and there was a bit of silence actually after the goal because I don't think any of the fans realised what had happened. Uh, but then all of a sudden, keep right on, blasted out. And that was literally set the tone for the rest of the game. Chong, uh, Hogan had a great ball past to Chong, who broke free one-on-one -on -one of the keeper. The keeper closed down Chong really quickly. He didn't really have time to think about what he was going to do and dispossessed Chong. Uh, Chong playing higher. you could, it'd be, With Chong playing so high and being so quick, Blues were causing all sorts of problems for Bristol. Um, the first half... Like, I I think I saw it for the second half that uh, during the half time, sorry, that Bristol had more possession. Honestly, it didn't, didn't look or feel that way. Uh, Blues were all over them. They didn't have a chance. I think they only went into our penalty area once or twice during the first half. The rest of the time, they were in their own area. When they had the ball, it was pass back, pass back. Uh, George Hall, another one, breaking through. I think he broke through three or four challenges at the edge of the Bristol box. Just couldn't. Couldn't get the shot off and a defender was there to cover. Hannibal was caught on the ball. Uh, this was a Bristol City counter, but a last-ditch tackle from Austin Trusty sent it into, into, into the stands, throw into Bristol. George Hall, a long ball. A long ball. I, I couldn't see. I think it was um, I think it was Dean who did this ball, but he kicked the ball up to George Hall, who literally just beautifully controlled that ball at the edge of the Bristol box, rolled it into the feet of Chung. Again, defender was there and they were just able to clear it. Amazing play for Blues, literally. From what we saw on Wednesday, Chong, Hannibal and Bielik just running after absolutely everyone in the advanced midfield area. Soon, soon as the ball landed at the feet or, the, or was even near a Bristol City player, those three, they were after him. Much better work for Blues, holding our shape really well, not giving Bristol City any space with the ball. There was a few silly mistakes, like John Ruddy passing the ball behind Trusty, considering a throw in, Sanderson making a silly little error and giving a free kick away, but still much better play. Harley Dean with a great long ball header allowed Hogan to break. I thought when the ball bounced, he was just going to hit it, but he didn't try to control it. And he, I think he was caught in between two minds of what to do. And then look at the defender, tracked him the whole way and the ball got stuck under his feet. That was it. Bristol at this point looked shit scared of Chung. They honestly looked like every time Chong was running towards them, they shit themselves and passed it back. It was funny to watch. Blues were pressive. Bristol Bristol were forced to cross it across their own penalty area and gave Blues a throw in. Uh, Blues were playing set pieces that we had for and against us. That you, There was no worry about them. Our lads were just solid and resolute all the way through. We have conceded two in two games, so it's obviously something they've worked on in training. This was not the Blues we saw on Wednesday. Wednesday was a lacklustre performance. I didn't think we deserved the loss. I think we deserved a draw. But this was a different Blues team. We kept the pressure on, looked really good. Blues looked like they'd, they'd not only put the pedal up to the floor, but they'd rammed it through the carpet. Uh, 35 minutes into the game, and honestly, I couldn't I couldn't tell you which one was the best, better player we had. They were all doing their jobs really well, from Dean to Hall to Hogan. All the lads had fought for every ball, not giving breathe, Bristol a chance to breathe. Uh, as, I, as I wrote down in my notes, Jesus Christ, free kick won by Bielik in a very dangerous area. Hannibal puts the ball in, and the American climbs up to meet the ball first. It hits the post, comes back out. Trusty followed it through, taps it in to get a brace. Uh, you couldn't believe it. 
I just couldn't believe this was the Birmingham City. Where well, this Birmingham City been all season? Uh, Hannibal received a yellow. Not clear what it was coming, what was for, but it was coming. Hannibal had been involved in a lot of challenges, and first half ends. And I'll read exactly what my notes say. What I typed up at half time. Wow, 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 what a half. Blues had four shots to Bristol's zero. Blues had three corners to Bristol's one. Blues have really kept Bristol imprisoned in their own half, which has been great. Standing applause from all the fans to the players as they trotted off down the tunnel. I said it and I'll say it again. There isn't a single player that I could point to and say he was a standout performance. They've all been fantastic. There is a couple of players I would like to highlight, those being George Hall. His pace, his skill, his trickery really were on show in that half. His link-up play with Chong, something beautiful. And it was awesome to watch. Chong is another one. Yeah, he had a moment of hesitation with cost as a goal-scoring chance, but his passing, his pace, his skill really were on show in the first half. The goal-scoring American Austin Trusty, again, his pace has been great. His goals have been obviously good, but I want to talk about his defensive work. He's been an absolute rock at the back, covered his mark fantastically. That isn't to say Dean or Sanderson have been bad. All three of them were great. Sanderson pushing high with the pitch and Dean's header and clearances were what gave Hogan the chance on goal. I said it in the last video, and I'll say it in this one. I would love to see Austin Trust in a blue shirt next season made permanent. Doubt it's going to happen, because every time he seems to play for us, he plays well, so the, his value is only going up. But God, I'd love to see that. I reckoned just before the end of the uh, half-time that Bristol were going to come out and throw everything at Blues. They really needed to. They were 2-0 down. They were chasing the game. Come to the second half, three changes were made by Bristol. Tanner for Sykes, Martin for Wells, and Semenyo for Conway. Bristol City free kick just outside the penalty area, which came from Martin, I believe, bounced off the wall and goes for a Bristol corner, which Ruddy come out to claim. Bristol really were putting the pressure on Blues a little bit here, but Blues were really resolute. They were running forward, another corner put behind by Bielik. Bristol City were really chucking everything at us, which was to be expected, but Blues holding on really well. Chung and Langello trying to break, but get thrown instead. Sanderson got a yellow for a technical foul. I would have done the same thing. The Bristol player was on the break. Sanderson did what he thought was necessary. Blues were never... Well, it was inevitable that Bristol were going to come out. So they, they couldn't carry on the way they were in the first half because we'd be 8-0 up. And we should have been higher than what we are. I will say that. We had some great opportunities and it, it didn't seem to end. I didn't want the game to end because I thought we could get more. Uh, Bristol... <clears throat> we're getting more of the ball in offensive area, but Dean showing great passion after a, an important tackle, really showing the fans that he's ready to come back into this squad. Blues were showing some silky smooth passes between Hall, Bielik and Jello. Right outside the Bristol te uh, Bristol box, Chong was just unable to control the ball uh, and the ball goes long, which Dean passes back to Ruddy. Whilst he's being pressured by two Bristol City players, really solid at both ends. For the first time this season, I, I was looking at the bench and I was thinking, we've got some great choices to bring on when our lads start to get jaded. Chong, with another great corner, comes out past the penalty spot. Bielik caught the ball on the volley and it just it just went wide at the last moment. That would have been a sensational goal. Uh, yellow card for Alex Scott for a, quite a nasty tackle on Hannibal, who was on the break. 64th minute, Bristol City made their fourth change. With Dylan Kaji replaces with Sergio. Hannibal on the break. Bristol really got stretched. Passes to Chong, who fake crosses, cuts inside by the byline. George Hall just couldn't convert it, but got a corner. More attacking play from Blues. It was great. Bielik received a yellow card. I think it was for another technical foul. Uh, the pendulum really had swung back in Blues' favour. Bristol just looked sh sh shell-shocked. We were blocking everything that they tried to do. They, they never really got into our penalty area at that moment. Uh, the one thing I will say is the ref seemed to give a lot of free, soft free kicks to Bristol. Uh, very, very soft challenges. These Bristol players, they, they felt hair on them and they dropped to the floor, which kind of makes it interesting when you've got Hannibal and Chong playing, which I'm guessing was their plan to try and break up the Blues play. Uh, Blues under the break, five, five strong this time. Hannibal with a great pass to Longello. Longello puts the ball across, but unfortunately no one there to clear it and Bristol clear it. 70th minute, Blues' first substitute. It was George Hall for Jordan James. Hall received a standing ovation for his play. Hannibal in the corner. He was like he was dancing on the ball. He was just spinning and pirouetting everywhere, leaving the Bristol player was confused. He was still trying to chase the ball while Hannibal was running with it. Uh, Hannibal with a header. Uh, sorry, Hannibal with the corner, headed away, but Blues recycled it back straight to Hannibal. 
passing along the box. Bielik, one too many touches. I thought he was going to take a shot outside the box. One too many touches, and Bristol cleared. 73rd minute, Bristol with another substitute. Cameron Pring for Jada Silva. Blues just keeping Bristol in their box. Hogan with a great run. Colin got the header flicked on to Hogan. Hogan chased it. Uh, then Hogan passed it back to Colin inside the, penalty, the Bristol penalty area. Colin was just inches away, uh, millimetres away from making it three. Bristol instead conceded the corner. Chung put the ball down, put his arm up, flicked it in. Sanderson over the line three now. Uh, it, it was just... I didn't expect this kind of reaction from the Blues. 76 minute Blues substitute Hannibal off for Joe Bellingham. Another great standing ovation for the Tunisian. Uh, you could see at that point, Juki, Dini, and Baka were uh, warming up on the sides, getting ready. Jordan James releases Chong, but uh, whilst doing it, he was took down by Kaji. It was horrible. He, everyone went to Jordan James. There was a few tempers flared. Catchy showed a yellow. 81st minute, Bielik off for Baka, Hogan off for Didi, Chog off for Juki. On that point, Bielik actually went up to one of the Bristol City players, tried to shake his hand as, as a show of sportsmanship, and the guy literally just slapped his hand away and walked away. You could kind of tell how Bristol were feeling. Claps rang around St. Andrews for the players leaving the pitch. Looks like the Bristol keeper City handed the ball, handled the ball outside the area. It looked like it to me, but the ref didn't get anything. But shortly after, Jordan Jays brought down. Free kick to Blues. Great work from Bellingham shortly after this to wiggle his way out of trouble. Ball to Dini on the wide. Dini outside of his foot, flicked the ball in. Juki jumping higher than everyone. I thought it was in. Bristol City keeper managed to save it, bastard. And the ball went out for a corner. Corner uh, came in by Baka and looked to me like it was fair. Dini attacked it. Their keeper went for it. It actually went over the line, so Dini did score. Sorry, Dean, sorry, did score, but the whistle went denying us our fourth because the keeper ended up on his ass. Juki was hobbling around after that, looked like he picked a bit of a knock, but he's a battler, so we'll just carry on. And Troy, one thing I loved about this, right at the end of the match, about 10 seconds away from the finishing whistle, Deeney was holding the ball in the left corner of the Bristol area, just trying to hold the ball whilst three Bristol players were trying to get it off him, and he won a throw in for the Blues. And the game ended 3 0 to Birmingham City. What a game. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is another chalk and cheese game from Wednesday's performance. And we seem to do this quite a lot this season. The lads won every single challenge, individual and group challenge. Rock solid at the back. Tricky and pacey in the centre. Hogan, even though he had the score, worked tirelessly to give Blues more chances. I haven't got a clue who I would call man of the match. Blues have been cracking all over the pitch. From the defence to the attackers... Brilliant play, full throttle since the first whistle. We hadn't stopped. We played some great, great football for what literally Blues dominated Bristol. And this this is something that you can see. And the commentators said it. You, I think it was Gary Gardner was actually one of the commentators. You could see something was being built up Blues. Eustace has got full confidence in his players. His players have full confidence in him. And the fans are behind us, behind them both now. It was fantastic to watch. I cannot wait for the next match. Um, oh, I'm going to have to give a man of the match to someone, aren't I? I'm going to have to. I've got no choice. Uh, if I had to say, oh, I don't know, Chong or Hall or Trusty. Oh, God, it's going to kill me. I'd say Hall. I think Hall would have played really well. He fought for every single ball. He didn't stop. Absolutely fantastic player. And... Hall and Chung, their their link up play is only going to get better the more they play. Uh, this is this is times looking good for Blues. I'm hoping we can carry this on. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and please again like, share, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Key right on, everyone. See you in the next one.